In this video, let's go through how to add a ditch to our project and tell it to seek a separate profile than the roadway so we can basically set an elevation target. <coughs> Quick tour, uh, we have a topographic survey surface, a corridor with its associated profile and assemblies. This corridor has been separated into many different regions. And what we're wanting to do is we're concerned about run on water from this hillside that's flowing down and towards our road. So we want to put a roadside ditch along the edge on the left side of this roadway down to a low point down here near 1350 or so. In order to do that, we're going to just quickly make a, another assembly and we're going to apply it to that region. So to do that real fast, let's come over here. We'll grab this assembly here that is already being pushed for the left side. We'll copy it over and I will rename it left curve and ditch. And then let's make some edits. So in this case, let's get rid of this daylight and there are many ways to do ditches. We're going to do it with several different pieces of the generic ones. So let's come over to our generic and let's do a vertical deflection. We're on the left side. I want to go down at 33, three to one and vertical deflection of negative two because I want to go down. So let's apply that. Let's do our ditch bottom. We'll do a length width and slope to the left. Let's do a three foot bottom, 0% slope, flat bottom. And now let's do a daylight. So let's do length slope to surface, left, three to one, and let's see, it's a ditch, so let's do cut only for this example. Now that we've got that assembly with all these sub-assembly components, let's add it to our region. Let's come over here, select our corridor, right click, go to modify regions, and let's go to region properties. And I want this region. I'm going to change the assembly to the ditch. And let's come over to our targets and make sure our surface target is still good. And it is, and hit OK, and OK. Rebuild. Give it a moment. I've got a lot of sections for this tutorial. And you can see that it has pushed it, and um, you can see the ditch contours here. Now, the problem with this is, if you push a sub-assembly with a ditch, with no additional targets. It will do exactly what is in that sub-assembly. So we told it to go down two feet, over three feet, and then tie the surface. So the ditch will be parallel in plan view to the center line, and it will follow the same vertical alignment uh, slopes and curves as the primary uh, profile that you have for that region. The problem is, oftentimes that a ditch may not work out and be uh, in that regard for your profile. In our, our case, we actually transition in this area between a cut and a fill. You can see that the ditch bottom is there, but there's no tie slope. So the ditch bottom is actually above ground. If I select this object and I go to section editor, we know we're going to be somewhere around station 700 change my scale here and yep 670 if I come in here you can see that two feet down is not enough the ditch bottom is actually above ground so this daylight was unable to seek a target because I told it cut only if I had done fill to cut and fill it would have tied down but then I would have had a bench instead of a ditch <clears throat> that's a problem because once you start a ditch you can't just end it we can't just let this water flow out here on the side of the side of the roadway. We want to carry this water all the way down to our low point. So this means that we need to control the this ditch bottom in a different way. 
what we're going to do is we're going to control it with an elevation target that's seeking a different profile. I'm going to come over here to our primary profile view, switch this back to 50. And we now we know that our creek is somewhere down here that where we ultimately want to tie. So let's go to home profile and profile creation tools. And we're going to create us a profile for our ditch center line. What we want our ditch bottom to do. And I am going to do a right sample and hit OK. We know that we want it to be about two feet deep minimum. So I'm going to start my point here. And I know I want it to end somewhere down here near this creek. Now you can see just this way, if we straight lined it, we're going to get very deep and then very shallow. So let's add us some PIs here. I'm just going to play some for this tutorial so you can see how to manipulate it. A little bit more control. Now that we've got that profile, we can change our targets to seek this. What we can also do is now I just drew this in here so you could see it. I'm going to change its style to something else, to standard maybe, just so I know what it is. Now let's create us a profile line that is the ed, the existing road or existing ground over at that center uh, where the ditch would be. So generally speaking, we know we're going to be somewhere in the realm of 17 to 18 feet away in a perfect world. And it's going to change, but that gives us enough weeks so we can see what the ground does. Let's go to profiles. And let's create us a profile. Let's create us a profile along our existing uh, our center line, that, may, that one we were looking at. I'm going to turn on sample offsets, and I'm going to do a little river. To the left of the center line is positive, and to the right is negative. So I'm going to put a positive 18, and I'm going to add it. And I'm going to change that to that left sample. Hit OK. And close. Now if I come over here. I can see that that sample line has been added. So I can see what the ground is doing in this area. There's not anything unexpected. You can see here it dips down much lower over there to the left. So I actually probably need to bring this down here as my tie point elevation. And I'm able to do my general depth below the ground in that area. So I can tell I'm about two, uh, four feet that area. This has a 10 exaggeration. So just another way so you can see what the ground is doing on the left and right. If you were had a lot of topography on the side of the hill, you would not probably need to do that so that you could see your profiles. <clears throat> now that we have that, let's change our targets and see what happens. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to select my, tar my corridor, right click, modify regions, and I'm going to edit targets of this region and hit enter. And over here, you can see this vertical deflection allows me to choose a profile. So I'm going to come down here to our ditch profile that we made and hit OK. Allow it to rebuild the corridor. And now you can see that the ditch is moving away from it and towards it. Turn line is no longer parallel, but it is at least two feet deep. It's very deep here, but I'm able to make sure it stays in the ground until it gets here. So you can do that with any vertical target. This gets weird because I didn't split the region. But really up to here is where our profile ties. <coughs> But you can do that as an elevation target to help create uh, special ditches, is what we call them, or ditches that are not parallel to the roadway center line. You could do similar for widening the bottom or if you wanted to move it horizontally. But just an example of how to use targets 
and profiles to achieve a constantly flowing ditch. If you like this content, please like it, click the like button, and subscribe to get more.